Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking about how do you talk to customers. So if it's for you or it's for your employees, either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? I'm glad you're hanging out, and if it is your first time, have a look around. We have over 200 episodes. <sighs> years, years of content. Go back, check it all out. Um, if you are one of the cool kids, what's up? Uh, you're somebody who watches every episode. You thumbs up the video here on YouTube, of course. You probably share things out. But more importantly, you call me, or text me, even better, and let me put your order in. Thank you. It's because of you that I get name brand cheese. Uh, thank you for uh, Mr. Rodriguez, by the way. Uh, but name brand cheese is the last one. Let me know what I can buy with all of my oodles of commission money from all you guys. No, but really, that is how I make my cheddar. So if you want to contribute at all, that's super awesome. It doesn't cost you any extra. I would love to be your guy. Put your stuff in. It's like a super virtual high five of awesomeness. My number is 862-312-2026. And I'm a rep for windowcleaner.com. Also, one more tier even above that is an ultra, or no, an epic cool kid. An epic cool kid does all that. And they've subscribed to the American Window Cleaner magazine. Boom. By the way, dopest cover ever. Squeegee Life is this. This is the uh, April issue, April 2021. This issue is for sale if you want to buy just this one on the site, awcmag.com. If you want to subscribe, do that and become an epic cool kid. Uh, yeah, subscribe. I'm asking you right now. Subscribe to the magazine. Get your subscription. There we go. Shameless plugs all done. Uh, today, we are going to be talking about something that's Keith Earls. If I'm butchering your last name, I'm sorry. But Keith gave me the idea for this one, actually a little while back, and I thought it was a really good one, but I couldn't quite figure out how to kind of put it out there. But what we're talking about today is how to talk to customers. Now, this is something that is really sometimes hard to even convey to employees. If you have employees, if you are doing it yourself, if you're the only person that works at your company, either way, it's cool to understand how to talk to people. Uh, talking to people is not just, uh, will be respective. That's obviously number one, right? But what it is, is trying to say things that they understand and stopping anything from happening in the future with that account. It sounds really odd, I know, but here's a few things to think about. With customers in general, there is a customer type. We've done that. I'm going to do another episode on customer types because it's super fun. But there's a ton of different customers out there. There is the, you know, uh, you know, nitpicky one. There's the one who just doesn't care and just wants it done. There is the I'm richer than you and you work for me snobby one. I mean, there's just tons of different types of people who you work for and do work for and do services for and talk to. Now, each of those people, you can't talk to the same, right? You know that. Um, I love a simple, hey, yeah, uh, cool. They get an estimate. Yeah, it looks great. I'm just excited to get it done. I love people who are just excited, treat me like a person. Those are the ones that are like my people, right? I could talk to them the way I would talk to anybody. But not everybody's like that. Not everybody's like that. And there's a few real big things that, in communication in general, you will miss something in communication and it will actually translate into something you didn't want. Now, if you're married, by the way, this could go either way. So you don't have to send me angry emails, but if you want to, it's jersey at windowcleaner.com. Send me angry emails. Um, but uh, if you're married, you understand that there is sometimes a communication barrier, right? I know, in my case, with my wife, who's very lovely and doesn't watch the podcast, so I won't get in trouble. But uh, <laughs> she um, sometimes says things, and I hear what she says, and I don't realize 
she meant something else. I'm that guy. Uh, I'm the one who, if I say, hey, uh, do you mind if I go spend the night at uh, up at the, the land tonight, up in the mountains? And she goes, yeah, fine, do whatever you want. But cool, thank you. And I leave. I'm that guy, right? I am the one who uh, I listen, I hear, and I do what has been told, right? Sometimes it's not communication. Communication doesn't necessarily work that way. Now, should she be a better communicator? Sure. But we're not here for therapy, right? But the thing is, is that there's certain ways to talk to different people. So now, if you hear somebody who says, oh, yeah, yeah it's fine, do whatever you want. Obviously, when you're not um, trolling back, you'd be like, oh, you don't want me. No, I said it's fine. Do whatever. Do whatever you want. All right. I really, I, I hear what you're saying, but I'm understanding what you're meaning. That's kind of the same concept, right? It sounds really, really odd, but it is the same concept in business, right? Business has a communication barrier sometimes, and you have to know how to talk to people to communicate. The first thing that comes to mind is answering the door. Now, I know this because this is one of the big problems that we have initially with people before we started doing like across the board training. And it's at the door, what's your process? How do you get greeted? How do you do whatever? But here's the thing. When I knock on a door, I'm a bigger guy. Uh, I know everybody thinks I'm short when they watch the this, but I'm like 6'2 plus, you know. I'm not skinny. Uh, I'm a full-figured male, <laughs> if you were. <laughs> By the way, on a side note, if you haven't yet, try to search out the picture of me, Alex, and Mark Tanner from the uh, uh, Squeegee Life. That's the one. He's very short, and uh, it was a great picture because uh, he looks like he comes up to my knee, but it just happens to be perspective. But I'm a bigger guy, right? If you're a bigger guy or a smaller guy, it doesn't matter. When you answer the door, knock on the door, you knock, you ring the doorbell, and you take an excessive amount of steps back. I am always at least like 5, 10 feet away from the door. I don't want anybody to be intimidated to answer the door. They know you're coming right? If you've done your job right, you've told them you're coming. But the big thing is, is I don't want them to be intimidated. And it's a first impression thing. It's a respect thing. Hey, hey, how are you? I'm always waiting like this. I got my papers in my hand. And I'm staring at the door with a smile. I'm not looking down reading like, yeah, oh, yeah, it's just Mrs. Jones. I'm smiling just there, right? First impression, open the door. There I am. Hey, Mrs. Jones, it's Jersey from XYZ. That's how I introduce myself. First thing, Oh, hey, how are you? Good, good, I'm good. Uh, I just wanted to give you a kind of a quick rundown on what we're going to be doing today. Explaining things at the door, you're setting expectations for the entire service. Now, I do this for people that I go to every single month. We have a few clients, actually, about a dozen, a little more than that, that do their job every single, we do their house every single month. I have one lady that does it every three weeks, which doesn't make sense. Stick to four weeks. It'd make things easier on me. But... I do the same thing. Oh, I know your procedure. I know, but you know it's a force of habit. That's what I do because I'm going to lay it out and your crew chief, if you are running them in crews, they need to do it on every single job. And if they start to pick and choose, they're going to lose that skill, if you will. They're just going to lose that skill. So have them do it on everything. But the big front, open the door, smile. Here's what it is. This is what we're doing. I'm going to explain to them everything that we do. So first, we're going to have Kyle here. I don't know. Whatever your text name is. Uh, they're going to come inside. They're going to start staging the windows. That just means taking uh, the screens down, opening blinds, getting your house ready. And I'm going to be getting stuff on the outside. Uh, as we work, we'll work in tandem, so uh, we'll make sure to not miss anything. He can point to me, I can point to him. And then when we're all done, I'll come back here, let you know we're all done, and we'll go back over everything. And then from that, I've explained the process, kind of what we're doing, if we're doing pressure washing, gutter clean. I'm going to explain it all to them. And then I'm going to give them the packet, right? I'm going to give them the packet. And here is uh, all of our other services, some gift cards. Uh, here is our, uh, what I call the bad news, the invoice. Uh, and then when I'm all done, you can seal it back in the envelope. We'll take the satisfaction form and that can check with the completed, blah, blah, blah. I'm not here to talk about what I actually say in that part. But that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to explain everything to them at the door with a smile before anything starts. 
There's something to be also said at this point. Don't have stinky breath. I, I can't tell you how many times I've had somebody who didn't smell like gum at my house. Like you're coming to my house and you smell like coffee or st- just chew some gum. Chew some gum, eat a mint. Don't have stinky breath. <laughs> By the way, um, I, uh, I have, I've had to fire someone in my company for being stinky. Literally. I had talks and talks and talks and finally I'm like, dude, this isn't working. You obviously aren't getting it. I got to let you go. Fired him for being stinky. Now, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk about horror stories in another episode. But don't be stinky. Talk to them super, super casual. Let them know everything that you're doing. Another big thing that you want to do in communication in general is over explain. Now, I know you know what window cleaning is. I know you know what your process is. You've been doing it for a year, 10 years, 30 years. I don't know. You've been doing it so long and you've done it for so many people that you know everything about it. A lot of people want to go into jobs and they want to just be like, hey, I'm here. We're going to start. Uh, Okay, cool. Thanks. I'm not wasting time talk. Well, here's the thing. You know what everything is going on, right? But they don't. They don't know the process. They don't know the strangers in the house. They don't know what to expect. So all of that has to be explained. And I'm telling you, when I explain the process, I'm going to go into depth. I'm going to break it down into layman terms and explain everything. Sometimes people too are like, oh, do you, do you not say, do you use the word soaps instead of a bleach? No, I'm not. Because I'm not using, there's soaps in there, surfactants, but I'm not going to put that out there. So when I'm explaining a house wash, we'll say, I'm going to go through and explain our process. You know, what we do is when we set everything up, we'll run to the back of the house. We'll just stretch those hoses out as far as possible. When we're working our way back, we're going to spray down your bushes. It looks like we're using our pressure washer, but we have that dialed way down on pressure. We're just using it to wet them down so that our chemicals that we're using um, don't affect that. And then we're going to spray our mixture, which is uh, bleach and surfactant and water onto your house. Let that act and treat the house. I'm going to go and explain things like that because when everything's done, nothing's proprietary. If anybody really wants to find out what you're doing, they're going to know. The only thing I don't do, which I have been asked more times than I think is people always say, um, do you tell them what's in your water when you clean windows? I don't tell them on purpose. Like I don't come out like, Hey, we use Dawn or whatever. But if somebody's like, what do you use in your water? I keep getting, trying to do it and it gets streaks. There's no proprietary solution, man. Just tell them. I always tell them, uh, yeah, we use Dawn and water, just a little bit of Dawn, less than you think you need. But the big thing is, is the equipment you're using is why you're getting streaks. And that's the truth. You get bad squeegees or you're using the same squeegee for 13 years. All of a sudden your windows don't turn out real well. Plus we do it eight hours a day, every day. We're getting pretty darn good at it. That's what I always say. People go, ha ha ha. And I go, ha ha ha. And they pay me. <laughs> but that's what I want to do as I want to over explain to people. I want to make sure that they understand what's going on. They can understand my process. They can understand my solutions. They can understand my chemicals. They can understand my equipment. They can understand my process. It doesn't mean you're losing customers because they're doing it themselves. Here's the truth about everything we do. If you're a window cleaner, It is not impossible for anybody to clean their windows. If somebody is living at home by themselves, they're still capable enough to clean the inside of their windows. They're doing it because they want to. We're a luxury business. It's not like somebody's like, oh man, I have no idea how to clean a window. I'm going to hire a window cleaning company just so I can watch and ask them questions to figure it out and start doing it myself. Mwahaha. They're not doing that. Unless you got some weird customers which we do all have weird customers but they're not trying to steal your secrets they're trying to understand and wrap their brain around it here's another thing if you've ever done roof cleaning or siding house washing any of that a big thing is people understand pressure cleaning they've seen it enough times they understand when you do concrete how to you're cleaning it with pressure they get that 
But when you spray their house, you just soap it down and everything just disappears. And they're like, I've tried so hard to get that. It didn't come off. Like, what did you do? They're not trying to learn your secrets. They're trying to understand what the heck you did. Why is this magical? And I'll explain. Well, we use sodium hypochlorite in our water. And that is going to kill all the biologics. So we're actually not just cleaning it. We're treating it. We kill all of that. And that's why it then rinses off the house. That's why when you clean it, it looks bad within a couple of weeks. When I clean it, it all has to come back. The algae has to regrow and re-come back from other areas. I always say it's like shooting a deer. You're never going to shoot a deer and then have it just get back up if you didn't kill it. When you shoot a deer and it's dead, it stays dead. Same concept. That might be a little bit more morbid, but I was from Wisconsin. Everybody hunted in Wisconsin, I guess. Anyway, um, explain things to people. Over explain things to people. Tell them every little bit about it because, again, you're educating it. The biggest part of this that you have to remember is that you're the pro. You're, you're literally the professional they hired. So even if you're new at this, even if this is your second week on the job, you're a professional. As soon as you get paid to do something, you become a pro- professional by definition. But If this is what you do, you're the professional. Now, before all of you people who have been in the business for a billion years come in and go, they're not professionals until year five. Eh, That's BS. They're technically professionals right away. You will always, always, always learn things. You're never going to know everything. It's just not possible. I've been in the business for like 15, 16 years, and I don't know everything. It just isn't possible, right? But with you getting better, you're still a professional. A lot of people in the very beginning they are a little bit more apprehensive because they have the delusion that they are a um, imposter syndrome is what they feel. And that just means that somebody thinks you're something you're not, but you know better, and it's very hard for you to wrap your brain around that. You're the professional, meaning they came to you, they hired you, and they're using your company, A, they don't want to do it, but B, because you said you could do it and you're assumed as the professional. So a lot of times, and this is especially with your employees, even more than you, but a lot of times um, it's harder to say something as a fact. You're almost like second guessing yourself and you're almost questioning it. So, you ah, well, you know, we cleaned. Did you, did you want us to start upstairs first or downstairs? I don't know. You're the professional. You're supposed to know, right? That's like changing, going, bringing your to a mechanic. And having them change your brakes. And them coming to you and going, Hey, um, did you want us to change the front ones first or the back ones first? Did you did you want a tire rotation and brake chain? Like, you'd be like, what did I get myself into, right? You'd be like, mm, I brought it to you because you're supposed to know that. That's, that's really what this all comes down to. You're supposed to know. So say it with fact, not question. Say it with fact, not question. So when somebody's asking you or you're explaining your service, this is what it is. Oh, uh, can I get you a check uh, next week or do I need to pay you today? No, we actually collect payment at every job uh, before we leave. So you can actually put it right in the envelope there, seal it up, and I'll take it. Right? You explain the facts of how the process goes. Now, you get to invent the process. That's the fun thing about business. You get to invent the process. You get to make everything that you want to happen, happen. That is completely on you. So the nice side of it is, is that you're able to lay out in your head again, back to systems, which I won't beat anymore, but I've done so many videos on systems. Uh, Go back, watch that. But on systems, it is a process you've invented and you're sticking to that process. Same thing on this is if you're going to get collect collect money on every job, if you're going to start on the second floor, if you're going to go inside to stage windows, if you're going to pressure wash the house before the side, the ground, anything that you do is right because it's you, but you get to invent that process. You're the pro. You have to understand that. So say it with conviction and uh, it makes things a heck of a lot easier. The biggest part of all of this in communication all of this is setting expectations. And when it comes to setting expectations, I'm not saying just explaining things. I'm telling you, 
This is how you explain to the customer what will happen. If you go in and they got a, a, a house that is old aluminum siding, nothing's been done, the thing was abandoned for years, and they got it, it was an, built in the uh, 70s, and it's just horrible. And you show up, pressure washing, window cleaning, everything else, and you just go, hey, we're about to start. Great. When you're done, they're not going to be happy. Because no matter if you explain the expectations or not, they have expectations. How many times have you gone to a job? By the way, if you're on YouTube, comment on this one. If it's you, just put in, type in me or yeah or something just so I see some kind of interaction. But how many times has uh, somebody expected it to look brand new after you're done? How many times have you gotten to Windows and them, you know, did you want to do the sills and, and, you know, did you want to do just the windows and the sills didn't get done? Or, you know, I've had people who um, had actual like window sills, like the ledge part that you would set like a tchotchke on. I didn't dust those down. Like the sill is like a big piece of it. It's not even on the window necessarily. They have all the tchotchkes they want moved. If they have an expectation in their mind, the only way somebody complains or the only way that somebody is not happy is their expectations weren't met. And I'll tell you that even if you break a window, they expected you not to break a window. If they're upset about that, that's why. They expected you not to break a window. If you broke a window, now they're upset, right? If they expect that house that hasn't been done in 20 years you go in and power wash the siding and it looks like donkey. They're not going to be happy. You pressure washed it. This looks terrible. Still looks bad. Well, yes, of course, because your house is old and it's... Here's what you do. In the very beginning, when you're over explaining everything, you're also going to explain the expectations. You're going to tell them what's happening. If I go to a job and there's artillery fungus on the siding... I'm going to go to them and say, so we clean siding. We are not able to restore your siding or remove those artillery fungus from the siding. We will be able to take it off the glass with razors and things, but when everything's done, the siding will look amazing, but there will be little black flecks still stuck on that. They are designed by nature to stick on everything, and you can scrub them by hand if you need to with uh, white pads or bronze wool, but it is such a tedious thing. Just let it be, and uh, over time, they will slowly release. What happens when you're done washing a house, and there's artillery fungus? They're going to come out, man, this house looks great. Oh, yeah, there's those, those uh, artillery, what are they called again? Yeah, those things. Yeah, those things you were talking about. They're there, huh? Oh, that's crazy. I can't, I didn't even notice them before. You just left their house, but you met their expectations because you told them the expectations. You said, hey, this is not going to come perfectly clean. When it didn't come perfectly clean, you just met their expectations because you set them. It's the same thing that if I notice a window with a, chick, a chip or a crack or something, I don't touch it. I do not touch that window. I'm not cleaning it. I'm not wiping it down. I'm nothing. I'm going to leave it dirty. A, because I don't want to be the one that the window decides to break on for the final time. B, I don't want them to think it was anything I did. If they didn't notice it, it's still dirty. I didn't touch it, right? But I'm going to tell them that. So if I see a window that has a break in it or a crack, I will tell them that afterwards, before, whatever, right? If we have older aluminum um, triple tracks, depending on where you are, you may have those. The worst window in all of the world, aluminum slides like, ugh. I haven't seen one of those in years because I moved. I moved probably just because of those. But if you have those, they're going to be oxidized on the frame. They're going to have the white spots on there. Listen, you have older windows. We know that, right? We're going to clean the glass, and the glass is still going to turn out a lot better than it is. It may not look 100% without actually going into doing some chemical restoration on it, but if you don't choose to do that, this is going to look great. The only thing is that those frames on the window, they are not going to look uh, brand new. Oh, no, I know that. Well, of course you say that, but I'm telling you the expectations. When we're all said and done, the frames don't look good, they're okay with that because I accept their expectations. Yeah, he told me the frames were going to look good. If you go and you don't tell anybody that, they get done and go, well, those frames, you never did the frames. The frames are terrible. Look at those frames. All of a sudden, you're the bad guy, right? So 
that is a big thing. You have to set your expectations. Setting expectations means somebody's not going to be disappointed. Uh, I had another, another um, uh, explanation on expectations, and it was really good, and I forgot about it. So, <sighs> anyway, set the expectations. Just tell them, tell them exactly what it is that it's going to look like and what it's going to do. Hard water was my other one. I do that with hard water. When everything's done, there's another thing. Sometimes we don't see things until afterwards. So what I do is if I get done and like, hey, uh, just you know, there's hard water on the front windows or whatever. When I go and do the final closing, I'm going to say, hey, everything turned out amazing. But one thing to let you know, there is some hard water on those front windows. So it looks like rain spots. That's not what it is. It's actually mineral deposits on the glass. We can take that off with a acid wash. Uh, it does start at $20 per pane. Uh, if you want us to do that, we can always send a restoration team out to do that. Otherwise, you probably won't even notice it if you want to take a look. And I'll walk them over and show them. And they almost always unless i'm upselling the actual service but i always will tell them that it's on them to kind of do what they want to do most of the time they'll be like oh yeah no don't even i can't even notice it don't worry about it but they have an answer so if they really find it awful they can fix it we can do that absolutely i'm telling them all of the things so their expectation is now it's there but it's on you if you want to get it done. If you want us to, if you don't say anything, they're going to call you back and hey, uh, I got a bunch of spots on these windows. And then you're going to explain hard water. They're going to be like, you're just giving me an excuse. Set the expectations. They cannot be upset. They can't be angry. They can't write you a bad review if you meet their expectations. Right? Have confidence in collecting. Went back to being you're the pro. At the end of the job, you're going to be collecting. Collect like a pro, but there is a closing always have a closing you have an opener hey here's who we are here's our stuff blah blah blah. our closer is always the same everybody packs up we get back there knock on the door 10 feet back hey mrs jones uh i just want to let you know everything turned out awesome i'm gonna go over everything in the house uh it, out, out to them your windows turned out great you know on the back of the window uh there was you know a chip in one of the windows or everything looked great there was some artillery fungus on the there was vines we talked about i'm going to explain everything because if you tell them up front, they don't think you're hiding it, right? Hey, just to let you know, uh, our tech was upstairs and the back of his pole hit the uh, little uh, flower vase that was on the thing. We're going to replace that. I just need to know dollar amount and where it's from and we can go ahead and take care of that for you. I'm so sorry that that happened. I tell them instantly. Oh, don't even worry about that old thing. I got it at Goodwill anyway. All right, you know what? We're going to knock off, you know, $20 off your bill. I'm so sorry about that. Don't even, don't. If you tell them about that, they will be okay with it. If they're super mad, they're still going to be less super mad than if you didn't tell them. If you, and I've had this happen, somebody broke a like perfume bottle on a tub and he put everything in a pile and he finished the windows and was going to tell the homeowner. He didn't go to how we explained to talk to customers. She went upstairs just looking over the windows and saw this broken glass. She was so mad. She was so mad. And he's like, oh, I was going to tell you. Well, at that point, no, I found out. You didn't tell me. So it was this whole thing. She said it was some antique grandma. No, it wasn't. It was some TJ Maxx thing. But anyway, so we did that job for free because it was a learning lesson for our techs to explain things to people instead of letting them find it. Set expectations, but I have a closing. At that closing, I explain everything that happened. And then I also will collect and I will get the satisfaction form back. I will also ask for a review and I will also ask for referrals. And this whole closing thing, what I'm going to say is after everything's done. Okay, so um, I did just need to collect the envelope with the satisfaction form and the check. Oh, yes. Okay, let me grab that. If they have it in their hand, awesome. If it's not sealed, go, oh, hey, would you mind doing, and this is for my text. Would you mind just sealing that up for me? Um, I don't want to, you know, see any of the satisfaction form. That's for the office. Uh, for you guys, the check in there, I don't want to lose that. We always have it sealed up and sent back. That way um, people can be a little bit more real in what they're saying on the satisfaction form. Uh, after all that, um, I'll say, oh, and just so you know, uh, we are a family run business. You know, if there's any chance that you have a free second, go to Google, just find us and review us. Say if you like their service or not. I really, really appreciate that. That's, that's how we survive and how people find us. 99% of the time, people are like, oh, yes, absolutely. 
use a nice job if you're trying to get um, referrals because that keeps up. People say yes, but then they don't have the time or forget. As soon as you close the door, they forget about you. Um, and another thing is I always say, do you know anybody else that uh, you think might want our services? I gave you those gift cards in there. Just give one of those gift cards. Make sure to give those to your friends and family. Uh, and if you ever want to pair uh, with services, we can actually discount things for you, right? I'm going to have my closing statement. Make sure you have yours. Make sure that they have an amazing experience because that's what we're selling. But make sure that they're not losing their expectations. Make sure that your breath doesn't smell. And make sure that you're just awesome. So either way, that's it. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. Again, if I could do anything for you and put any orders in or be your rep in window cleaning, I'm a salesman, again, for windowcleaner.com. So call me, text me, save my number right now. Save it. It's 862-312-2026. By the way, people who watch all these episodes, you've heard me say that uh, about 400 times because we've had 200 episodes, once in the beginning, once in the end. You've probably memorized that number, but yeah, save it. Text me, shoot me a text. That'd be super, super duper awesome. And if you really want to be amazing and you really want me to be like, dude, you are absolutely rad. Get a subscription. If you haven't yet, yes, it's a magazine, but it's super, super awesome. Super awesome. Pictures. And you want to know something I think is, is really cool? By the way, Justin Monk is in this one. Uh, his new facility is in there. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. But anyway, um, there's something that we do in the magazine too, and it's just general random pictures which i think is so cool it's like a skate magazine right so go out there get it awcmag.com forward slash slash go get it be awesome until next week uh make sure that you're talking to your customers the right way and more importantly go out there and be epic